Hashtag ways where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osayame Sally, and today NJ and I are in studio. Hello, Mwajaga. Hi. <laughs> I love your name. I call it in full. Mwajaga. I thought it was Mwajaga. Mwajaga. I get that a lot. I try. No, you tried. Not many people can pronounce your name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> From the spelling alone, they first of all. Take a, a step back. <laughs> I always like it when I say, oh, but you can call me Angel. Angel. Yes, I'll go with Angel. <laughs> How are you? Good, good, good. How is your week starting? Um, been a, quite a week. I had some internal office. Uh, I can imagine. It's going well. This, uh, this is part of life. So you always have things to deal with. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You look by, amazing, by the way. Thank you. When am I starting tennis classes? I don't know. Really? And I can't help you with that. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I you... will shock you. <laughs> One day you just come and see that I'm all snatched. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Isi of Fadili has joined us via Zoom. Isi, how are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you, Saimame. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Just how is your week day. starting? Ah, it's been a hectic one, I must say. It's been a, a, a tedious one for me, but... I can't complain. I thank God for everything. Uh, and I totally agree with you. Her name is actually a mouthful, like uh, Isima Home. <laughs> but I try to call it's only Uti's one, Uti's name. I'm still struggling to Uti Ware share me or something. I'll try to, but at least I can pronounce Isima Home. Precisely. <laughs> we are doing we have a long name. <laughs> it's only Uti's name. Once I get it right, you will not hear me call her Uti again. <laughs> <laughs> change it. I will change it for her. But hey, we have an interesting conversation today. You know, mm -hmm. it's always interesting where we get to celebrate our own. Um, part of what we do on the show is not just to talk about the challenges and everything. When we also see exceptional youth doing things, we also like celebrate them, right? And um, here's what we found as today's quote. You are only great to the degree you impacted others with your life. This is from Sunday Adilaja. Now, um, you may remember her from the coronation of Charles III and Camilla, where she was carrying the, uh, uh, what's it called, the sovereign orb in the royal procession in her elegant ghillie. Today, we will be celebrating um, the life's work of Dame Elizabeth Necker, right? Anion, that's the name. <laughs> and discussing the topic, living a life of impact. And, and purpose. Uh, we'll do all of that, but first, let's quickly run off on the break. We have a lot to cover in um, what we found in the news. All right, you're still watching Waze World Six, uh, Six, <laughs> Six Six uh, Six Like it's a, it's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> awareness Day is observed every year on May 24th to raise awareness around the condition and educate people around its symptoms and um, treatment is a chronic um, and severe mental disorder affecting a people's thinking, perception, emotions, and behavior. It is characterized by positive symptoms such as um, hallucinating, that's perceiving things that are not there, and delusion, that's fixed false belief, as well as disorganized thinking and speech. Negative symptoms include Re, uh, reduced emotional expression, social withdrawal, and a lack of motivation are also, you know, part of what you face when you're schizophrenic. Now, I just wanted to quickly share between, because again, there's always um, confusion between bipolar and schizophrenia. Um, they say so for bipolar, um, they are both two mental health disorders. People may mistake the symptoms for, for one another. Bipolar disease is characterized by intense highs and lows in a person's mood, energy, ability to function. While schizophrenia, on the other hand, has, um, is a disorder where people perceive reality, like I'd mentioned. Right? In the case of bipolar, a person alternates between mania and depression, and in between also has normal moods. Um, during many episodes, a person may have elevated moods, increased energy level, impulses, risky behaviors, or difficulty focusing. While during depression phase, the person might be lacking so much energy and do all that withdrawal, of, all of that. So that's why sometimes people uh, mistake both um, conditions. So for I think the best way to know 
which is what or what it is that you're going through is just go see a medical doctor, right? Um, nice. For schizophrenia, patients might grow into like they are not able to sleep, you know, they're just awake, they're not, they're losing sleep and all of that. There's, there's a lot that goes on. I was really hoping we could get a medical doctor to come talk to us about this again because I, I don't know how it is. Lately, I've seen a lot of people telling me that, oh, I've had to use, um, what's it called, um, pills to, to sleep. Some people cannot sleep. 3 a.m. they're awake. 4 a.m. they're awake. Like their eyes are clear. It's only sometimes maybe they start to sleep around um, 7 a.m. in the morning, right? Then they probably sleep to like 10 and they're done for the day. So people actually are, you know, losing sleep. So is it possible that maybe um, concerns and all of that might also develop these kinds of um, mental illnesses only God knows. But, I mean, I wish we could get, you know, an expert to help us understand it. What is the real cause of schizophrenia and, you know, maybe bipolar as well. So, um, whatever it is, you're properly diagnosed and maybe you start to take your medications or whatever it is that would help you get better. But do you have any case of, do you know anyone that, you know, has all these mood swings and all of that? Well, now I've seen the, some of the symptoms. I can... I'm sure what happens, I feel like what happens most of the time is that we don't even know because we don't even care to find out. Mm. So until, you know, um, growing up, you see some people and they behave in an abnormal way and someone says, ah, they're calling, we, we refer it as to either something spiritual or they're calling you in your village or someone is following you from your village or something has been put, you know, in the ground or somewhere for you. You know, we always term it as something spiritual until it gets out of hand. Mm. So um, just like you said, it's very, very important for us to take note of such things. And actually, it's, it, you're able to actually treat some of these things in the early stages before yeah. it gets to the point of hallucination yeah. and seeing things that are actually not there. Yeah. So it's very, you very... become delusional. Yeah, so it's very, very important that even when we, even as parents or as individuals, that we take note of some of these things and then you know, raise concerns where needed so that people can actually check this mm. thing out. Because sometimes we just walk around not knowing what is actually going on on the mm. inside. And we put ourselves through um, enough pressure for our mental, um, you, you know, for our mental state to be unstable sometimes. So Absolutely. it's very, very important to check yourself. Even you have a lot of people that you hear cases of um, someone who was maybe at the club or just dancing and you hear people say about just with him at a party the other day and they just get to third Milan bridge and, they and they're off the bridge. I so, mean like, so those highs and lows, you yeah. have to monitor and be sure. You know, it's very, very important. You see, how about you? You have something to say? I absolutely. Totally. I do. What actually resonated with me when NG was talking was, um, how it affects teenagers, basically, you know. We think that, you know, in my interactions with teenagers, I've seen where teenagers are, you know, a bit withdrawn. They're not interactive. They don't want to talk to anybody. And with my take, it, oh, it's some sort of a personal or a family challenge that they are probably going through, not knowing that probably the child has some sort of a mental challenges which i don't want to say the child has dementia or something so it is important to also look out for these symptoms like NJ yeah. and, and go to the hospital and tackle it at the early stages mm. because children tend to react in such a way that it's the no no it's it, there is no going back about it and you ask okay why is this child feeling like this why is this child talking like this and the child tries to express his or her feeling and we feel oh you're too young to be talking like this or feeling like this do you have any problem are you paying any bill are you paying nepa bill are you do you have uh, 50 children or something that you're, you're thinking of how to feed them or stuff like that not knowing that probably that child has some psychological issues that the child is trying to resolve and maybe for some reason i i think we didn't actually get to know what causes it but whatever happens is it's essential that when a child feels depressed or when the child is going through some sort of mental problem and the child is not expressive about it, it's important that the child seeks help either through the parents or the child is taken to a professional. Absolutely. So what did you find for us in the news, EC? Okay, my news. It's a feel-good story, basically, and it's all about 
brain implants, basically. And it is it's so interesting to me because the, the story is about um, an individual who couldn't walk and he was giving that yardstick or giving life to be able to, you know, walk again. This is um, a story from BBC. Sorry, I have a cold. This is a story from BBC and it is about a young man who couldn't walk. Uh, I'm trying to dig out my story. Give me a second, please. Oh, just a minute. So... This is a story about a young man um, um, who couldn't walk and he was paralyzed. And they had to implant some sort of um, electrical, um, new, um, what's it called? Uh, some sort of electrical stuff into his brain for him to be able to walk. And all he just has to do is to think about it, basically, for him to be able to walk. Is a case of, you know, um, it's a case of the power of the brain and the power of the mind, how the mind works, basically, and self-motivation. He is a young man who had the positives in his mind that he could walk again with the uh, implants in his head. And when he, it was um, implanted in his head, his name is uh, uh, Gert Jan Oskam, a 40-year-old Dutchman, and he was paralyzed in a cycling accident about 12 years ago. He says that the use of the electronic implants that wirelessly transmit his thoughts to his legs and feet has changed his life completely. Now, why the story actually resonated with me is the power of the mind, the power of positive talk, uh, thoughts, pardon me, the power of positive thoughts and how it affects the body. Sometimes we think, positively and we think oh when we think positively it doesn't have any you know impact in our body yes this is a simple example of the power of the mind and the neurons that um, we have in our head how it affects our body or our brains how it affects our body and the power of technology as well which is we which is currently totally almost absolutely. boundless absolutely yes amazing another thing that Yes, another thing that actually resonated with me is affordability for those in developing countries. When well, will this be? We, we, we will get there. We will get there. Some of yes, these things. I mean, healthcare is not healthcare is not cheap anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely get there. But I like the fact that, you know, um, everything, they say the battles of life starts and finish in the mind. So, if you are able to conquer what some of the things, you know, you're your deep-seated thoughts. You know, I was just having a conversation with someone last night and I said, see, a lot of times we self-sabotage because our thoughts are not in alignment with what we say or what we want or what we want to do, right? So until you're able to align your thoughts to, you know, like the results you're expecting and all of that, then you start to see results in your life. And, and, and I like the technology because, again, it goes back to how powerful the mind is, you know. I like yes. that. All right, so, Angie, what did you find for us in the news? Well, my news is not uh, so... Not a feel-good one. <laughs> yes, no. Um, this is... A com the news has been brought to us on about Benson Idaho, the Benson Idahosa University final year student who died due to alleged negligence. Um, the student who was identified as Bruno Chigozi, um, in some posts in, on Instagram, you can see him, share, him and his friends sharing news of his death mm. because he was left unattended to for hours at the school clinic which was not properly equipped. And when his friends insisted for him to be taken to a nearby hospital, um, they were refused um, access. Why? That they needed an official to approve for them to be taken, for the student to be taken to the hospital. And then when that was done, then it became a case of the, uh, there was no foil in the ambulance. So there was, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of incidents that led to this. And while all that time was passing, here was a student who was in dire need of medical attention, was left unattended to. And due to that, he lost his life. A 400-year student. So it comes as... Um,
you know, very sad news because um, the school would have to give a, uh, an account and a report on how, um, on what exactly transpired and how this student lost his life on the grounds of the school premises. And it's quite, you know, we've been having, we've had certain um, conversations about situations and issues like this. Mm -hmm. You know, the school not taking proper, you know, control of how the process is. This is a case of an emergency. There is absolutely no reason why a student who needs a medical attention should be left unattended to for over five hours. Mm. That is a very long time. Mm. So you can imagine if it was something that maybe he was convulsing. And you know how quickly that seems Basically, to run. Basically, Dahosa University is the one that is owned by the Dahosa family, right? Yes. That's different from Munich University. No, very different families. Okay, so I think we would have to, you know, would have to write to the appropriate authorities, you know, to call whoever. Because, I, like, it does not make any sense to me. You understand? It's not in the heat of an emergency you start to say you want to go and look for, for permits or exit permit and all that. That's, that's like, it, like, I don't understand how we value human lives in this country, right? This is a needless death. You, do you understand? So there are some things that you know that we did everything possible and this thing, it just had to happen. The person had to die. But this one, right, if there was uh, medical attention, and I, I think if it is... If they, and if the parents would allow, let's have an autopsy. Let's stop having all these things they say God has given, God has taken. Mm -mm. Let's have an autopsy. If it is proven that if he was taken to the hospital between maybe first to, first to the first hour when it, the, whatever happened, the medical uh, attention was needed and he was immediately attended to, he would have lived. It's an automatic shutdown of the school in a in, in sense, you know. But it's an see, automatic shutdown of the school. For me, the fact that this kind of situation has happened several times and people, even the school has gotten away with it, if you understand what I mean, it just shows you how we value life in the country, not even about the university. It's not, not about, about the, the university. It's, that's what I said. It's how we human don't, we, lives. Because a lot of lives have been lost. You take, you, maybe there's an accident. You rush the person to the, the individual to the hospital and then the hospital will tell you that they need a police report. It's because of the kind of system that we have put in place. And that is why it almost seems like we have no value for human mm. life. It's quite unfortunate, but that's but the reality. I think they should, the appropriate authorities should really investigate the situation. And if something needs to be shut down, please. I mean, people, I'm a parent. Do you understand? Mm. Like, after all the years of investing in the life of that child, you know, at four, you now lose the child at 400 level. Over what? Medical negligence. It's not something, maybe something happened. Maybe a tsunami came and took the child away. No. This, this death would have been avoidable. Why do we even have universities without well-equipped um, medical centers? No, so I get it, right? They might just have very, very mild. Because even in my university, it was a, what's it called? Like a it, it was clinic. a small clinic medical and all of clinic. that. When my sister had a medical emergency, I mean, it was, we rushed her to the clinic. They were able to, like, stabilize her before, yeah, you know, before, yeah, before um, someone came all the way from Benin to take us to, to begin to, 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 because there was no hospital. And but there because no there was an immediate attention, at least she was stable, before we now went to the hospital, you know, and all of that. I, I'm saying to you that this, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You understand? Even if you don't have the equipment, at least have something that caters to an emergency. How do you emergency. have an ambulance with no form? I'm just saying. Okay. So my story, I want to take two stories, actually. There's one on um, some young children in Nasaba. I think there's a school in Asaba that is, they believe that these children are being initiated to some, some kind of secret cult by marking their hands and all of that. I mean, this ties back to, again, what kind of schools are we having? Who are the people, like, monitoring these children? I remember when I was growing up, I have this mark on my, on my, on my arm, right? I have the same mark on my arm. And I remember we used to do that with the matchbox, right, where we would just put it, and, you know, just to test our capacity to withstand heat. But this is actually very troubling because uh, from the guy doing the video, right, he had over 60-something children that it is a, is a way of initiating. The, so they call it they snake do? bite. They call it a snake bite. It's a way of initiating the children. So whatever it is, once you have that mark, if anybody tries you, if, if any teacher, whatever, they, would, they will fight for you. They will attack the teacher on your behalf. 
so many things will happen. So the, 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 the man making this video was just calling on the education board to please look into it, that children are being initiated. And these children are all below 15 years old, right? Yeah, very, I saw very, very tiny children there. So all of them have this marks on their hands. And, you know, he did a survey. So he said the way they make this mark, I think they use like a paper. The paper will be extremely hot. They use it to mark you. There were some that they marked that the mark didn't show. So they had to turn the other side of the arm, you know, where they draw uh, blood from the vein side to, to mark it. It makes no sense. And this is a secondary school. A mass like these children are being initiated. Nobody's raising any alarm. So is this done by students? You or said? Is this done by students? By students. Teachers? So students mm. initiate. So when you come into the school, I will, if I've been initiated and I come, I'll mark you. So that's how they just continue to transfer the, the initiation, you know, and all of that. Mm. I don't know what the implications of these initiations are, apart from the fact that they say, okay, whatever it is, they fight for you, they whatever, they attack people on your behalf and all of that. But this is, this is alarming. This is alarming. All right, so um, quickly, I want to take another story on Netflix, right? So, Uti, um, Isi, you were saying something? I said the school authority should be questioned as well because yeah. they have a huge role to play in this matter. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, schools are scary. So let me tell you my experience when I was going to serve, right? NYSC, I had my baby, a, a, a tiny baby in my arm. They posted me to one secondary school in Lagos here on the mainland. I won't call the school just to protect the identity of the, the school. It's a government school. By the time I was posted there, I went to the principal to report to say, okay, I'm going to be teaching physics, right? Because that's what I studied in school and all of that. Then she started giving me a long list of, um, of rules and regulations. That if the student talk to me, I shouldn't talk back at them. If the students are rude, I should just leave them. If the student do this, I said, so what's the point of teaching in a class? So if I'm teaching and they're making noise, I can't caution them, I can't correct them. That if I do that, that by the time I'm coming out, they would have slashed my tire, they would mark my car, they would, yeah. This is a government secondary school in Lagos here, on the mainland, right? A lot of them are like that. So no. immediately she said it. I said, please, I have a toddler. I'm breastfeeding. Wow. Please, madam, just reject me. I, no, I just told her, there and there, I told her, please reject me. So immediately she rejected me. I went to a school within the estate I was living, a smaller school, a private school, and that was where I did my youth service. But it didn't make any sense. I'm, I'm already, you know, petrified like this, saying that I'm, I'm a breastfeeding mother, I'm a young girl, it's not like I'm particularly old, you know, some of these children, they are bigger than me and all of that, and you're now telling me that when they are talking, when I'm teaching, I should not, I should not do the, I should, she gave me a long list. I said, see, immediately she finished, I didn't even let her finish. <laughs> I said, madam, please just type my rejection letter. I, I take or beg you. It's the same love that you have for me that you told me this. Use the that same love to give me a rejection letter. <laughs> to send me away. Send me away. Yeah, I love for you, though. You said? She, she did have a lot of Oh, yeah, she loved me enough to, to, to caution, to, like, prepare me ahead. So, please, and that's yes. what I said. With this love that you have, just please finish the love. Send, give me a rejection letter. And that was how I left, send you know. Send me packing. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, so I, I was just going to mention that Netflix, for those of us that are... That <laughs> <laughs> let, let me not go and cobra the way that our Nigerian guy. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to deal with that boy. And he was apologizing. The way he cobra does for UK visa. Mm. So Netflix is saying that um, going forward, I think in the US, um, all the people that have like passworded that you're sharing passwords and all of that, you will not be able to do that. I think they've been able to do some level of crackdown on passwords. So in case you were planning to say you are not doing um, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? Uh, you're planning to. Share your, password. share your password and all of that. If you're in the U.S., it's no longer going to be possible. Mm -hmm. We just saw a breaking news, right? Yes. Uh, the queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner, just passed away at the age of 83. Aww. That's quite unfortunate. Wow. Uh, I loved her energy, that woman. Yeah. Oh, she was, gosh. She was... Oh, wow. Tina. She was Tina quite Turner inspired. Is oh, my gosh. That's heartbreaking. She, she sang some of the she best. She was simply you know. the best. Yeah. Simply the best. Simply the All best. right, so let's go on a break. When we come back from the break, we want to tell an inspiring story. Stay with oh. us. We'll be right back.